Topic 4.2, access to fresh water. Our significant ideas include that the supplies of fresh water resources are inequitably available and unevenly distributed, which can lead to conflict of concerns over water security. Uh, also, we can sustainably manage freshwater resources using a variety of different approaches, uh, which we'll see later on. Uh, first, just to get some perspective here, uh, we could compare the volume of water uh, to the volume of the Earth. Uh, usually we think about, you know, the Earth is 70% water, so there's tons and tons and tons of it. Uh, but that's actually the Earth's surface is 70% water. The Earth's volume is a lot less than 70% water. Uh, most of it is all that uh, core and mantle. Um, but it is sort of useful, you know, we think this is a huge planet, we got plenty of water, we're going to be fine. Um, so here's all of the water on Earth, uh, including oceans and ice caps and lakes and rivers, uh, groundwater, etc. The next water down here is the liquid fresh water. Um, that's readily available for us to use. Uh, we might be able to pump it out of aquifers or get it directly from the lake ponds, etc. And this little smallest circle right here is going to be water actually in lakes and rivers. Actually from NASA, I believe. Um, so that water does not have an even distribution throughout the world. Um, last year we looked at Hadley cells and um, uh, weather patterns circulate. Uh, so we get lots of evaporation here at the equator. Um, and that's why you get tons of rain on a giant lake this year. Um, that Warm air will move to either side and then fall down at 30 degrees latitude. So as that air falls, it takes a little bit of pressure, and high pressure tends to lead to dry areas. We get a giant desert here, and giant deserts down here, and then, oh, look at our deserts up here. Cool. Another uh, factor that causes deserts is rain shadows. Um, so here we have prevailing winds moving from the west to the east, so as the winds are mountain, they can't go through the mountains, they have to go up, so they'll cool down and they'll condense, uh, and then they'll actually precipitate, drop all their moisture um, off the other side of the mountains, you moisture, they actually off our landscape on the other side. Um, so here's an example of that, uh, where you can see lush forests, um, and then dry on the back side of the mountains, so the winds are probably coming down this way. Um, you see this in California. Um, we were just in Washington this summer, saw so the same thing. Very cool. Um, you can actually find some other places on this map, right? So, like, this is really far away from 30 degrees latitude, but there's still a desert here. I wonder why. Oh, there's giant mountains that run right down here. There are more mountains that run over here. Um, you could look at other places, too, right? There's this giant desert, which is really far away from 30 degrees latitude. And, ooh, yeah, there's some pretty big mountains over here. Have you heard of them? You might look at South America too, right? Uh, deserts all along here, and oh, interestingly, the Andes are also in that area. Cool. Um, so that access can also be affected not just by climate, but also by um, society and where you happen to live. Um, I'll post a link to this video so you can watch it on your own time. Uh, but this will go over the Flint water crisis. A few years old at this point, though, I do believe there's still some people in Flint that are having. Uh, complicated thing. Uh, so here's a look globally at access to fresh water. Um, so it's showing here uh, the percentage of the population that does have clean drinking water available, um, and it's regions of the less than 50% of the population might have access to that drinking water. Um, climate change is going to further affect rainfall patterns um, and make it even harder for people to either have water or, as you can see on the right, having too much water. Um, and unfortunately, it kind of ends up that dry places will tend to get drier uh, and wet places will tend to get a little bit wetter. Maybe you've heard about some of those crazy floods happening over in Pakistan right now, uh, where like dozens of people are dying. Uh, I just saw a video, like a street looked like like a like class five rapid in Grand Canyon. Like it was kind of horrifying, honestly. Um, and then, of course, we've been in prolonged droughts here in the southwest, and there's lots of talks about states finally have to cut um, the amount of water that they use. Um, I think there's some, like, drought restrictions happening in California already. Um, yeah, it's, it's a real issue. Um, so our next understanding, as populations, irrigation, and industrialization increase, 
the demand for fresh water also increases. It's pretty obvious all of those things require fresh water. Um, and then those supplies might be become limited uh, through contamination and unsustainable abstraction. Uh, abstraction is just taking water um, out of the natural place that it is. But too much groundbreaking stuff, right? If you use too much water, you're going to run out of it. It is renewable, but only to a certain extent, right? Well, I guess a lot of times we say water resources like aquifers are replenishable because it takes a little bit more time for them to restore, depending on the aquifer. You know, some might be years to decades, other ones might be hundreds to thousands of years. So some of the water from Akazu as well, they've measured as being like over a thousand years old, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it'd be even cooler if you could drink it, but it's also got like tons of arsenic and other like really poisonous stuff in it. Uh, so don't do that. There was um, native peoples that lived there, and I think they might have had even shorter lives because of those. Um, so a look at water use worldwide. You can see most of our water is used to grow food. Makes sense. Um, but we also use a ton of water for industrial purposes, actually, um, and then municipal being the smallest little chunk there. Um, it's kind of funny, right? Usually we talk about water conservation and we say, hey, turn off the sink while you're brushing your teeth or take a shorter shower. And we don't really ask much questions about these other two big chunks of the pie chart, almost 90% of the global total. Um, but anyway, whose fault is it, right? Is it your fault as the consumer? I don't know, that's what I want you to think. Um, this water use can have dramatic impacts on ecosystems. Uh, so here's Tucson, uh, Tucson back in 1904 compared to 2007. Uh, most of this is from groundwater pumping. Um, so they're not actually taking water directly from the river, but they are pumping water from the aquifer. And actually, the aquifer feeds the river. In Arizona, legally, um, surface water and groundwater are considered two different things. It's just so fun. Uh, they're connected, obviously, right? We brought down the aquifer and, whoa, the river's down too. Um, pretty sad. There's also a lot of changes to hydrology, right? Like the natural hydrology uh, will sort of slow and, and soak up the water, uh, whereas now we like to just get the water out of our cities as fast as possible uh, and just build channels. Um, and that kind of leads to more um, compounding issues. Um, here's a, another dramatic example of the impacts that agriculture can have on water systems. Uh, so you can see the Aral Sea. In just 50 years, um, going from this huge extent to uh, just barely any water left. Um, and that water that is left is super saline as well. Um, in this case, mostly for cotton. Uh, cotton's a nice cash crop, making the cash, uh, but uses a lot of water. You can see scenes like this all over the place. You might see it um, in the Aral Sea in Kazakhstan, or you might see it near Lake Mead um, in the southwest. Uh, I saw it seems just like this on Grand Canyon semester, um, actually on field trips a few years ago too, um, where there's just a marina that's now just in mud because the water levels are so low. Um, I'm going to put this one in another video.